Greetings hobbyists, this is Artisans of Vool, and in this video we're looking at the new pipe generator that comes in the free add-on ND. So as shown in some previous videos, I'll put links to a playlist in the description, ND is free, we just come up to edit preferences, get extensions and find ND there, and it has recently had an update, which is why you can see this at the top, saying that I need to install this update. So let's click there and get it updated. Now this is one of the nice things about Blender now that we have this get extensions thing. It allows these kind of included, or at least in the extension warehouse, add-ons to be updated without Blender having to be updated itself. So that's really nice. Save preferences as you normally would, though you shouldn't need to, and I quite like to restart Blender after this. So with that sorted, I thought I'd bring us into a file that I've been working on recently. It's some computer workstations. Just to make it a bit obvious what we're doing, let's just change the color on this so it's a little bit less bright. There we go. And then we can have a look at what we're doing. It's going to be easier to see. So what this requires is basically any form of vertices. So I'm just going to shift A, mesh, and we can bring in, I don't know, let's say a cube. And all I'm going to do is delete this out to the point where I'm happy with the shape that we've got. So let's just S and Z to get to somewhere there. Let's rotate that around so it's going to be about the right place there yep and then I'm just going to come into vertex mode and just delete out those vertices so that we've got just a single surface there in fact let's make this a little bit darker as well so it's much easier to see what we're doing there we go and then importantly we only want to have a series of edges so I'm actually going to delete this edge there so we've got rid of that edge and now we've got a series of edges let's just G and then Y this across the side somewhere there and then make sure that that is attached to our surface and we're imagining we're making a handle because a handle and a pipe is basically the same thing. So control and A and apply the scale and I'm going to come back to the modifier menu so we can see what this is doing because this is going to set up our modifier for us. So shift and two generators and pipe generator you can see it's made a series of modifiers in the right hand side. And then all we need to do is move to the right if we want to make this wider and move to the left if we want it thinner. And we get this to the point where we're happy with it. Really easy. Now we can just click here if we want to and we're good to go. But there's a lot of other things that we can change here which I think are fantastic. But first of all, I just want to point out if we go into edit mode, this is entirely non-destructive. So if I G and then let's say X and X, I can make this smaller and wider if I want to, but also we can start changing all of the information to do with this geometry node setup. Now the first place we can do that, if I drag this over, is we can do this in the pipe generator. You've got all of the options here that you can go through and what you can change, but I actually prefer it if I just shift and two and click on the pipe generator again. It brings us back to this menu, and what's nice is that nothing's gonna change accidentally. I can move this around and we're not gonna have any accidents. You'll notice that all of them say X to unlock. So if I press X, it is going to unlock the radius and we can go back to modifying it, which is really nice. I can also change the segments. In fact, I'm going to click to come off of this and go into wireframe so you can see what this looks like. So we've got this is our wireframe at the moment and we'll just shift F2, pipe generator. And then what I can do is hold down Alt and then press X to unlock it. And then I can change the number of segments or I can just scroll up to make this nice and rounded. The other thing I can do, which I really love, if I hold down control, and again, at the moment it's locked, so I'll press X, you can change the corners. So this will solve any 3D printing issues you may have when it's like this and you've got overlaps. 3D printing is something you do, you can bring it to let's say here and you'll be fine. Or we can press control and alt, and in this instance, X to unlock it, and we can change the number of segments. So you could have something really sharp, all the way up to as rounded as you want it to be. And once again, this is all still, just select those, G and XX, non-destructive. Now there's several other things that we can do as well. I'm just gonna turn the wireframe off for now. I will mention that again later. So once again, let's come into the menu and you'll notice that at the bottom, it's got an option that says configuration mode. And at the moment, it's set on pipe. And you can see we can switch between the pipe, the corners and the ends. Now, as I said, we can control the corners from here, so we can do that, but we can get some more fine control. If I press C and get to the corner configuration mode, I can scroll up and down to change between the different vertices, which is really cool. 
And when I'm on this vertex, say, I can hold down control and I can change the radius of this one. So I could have different corners having different roundness. Now, obviously, for something like a handle, we probably don't want that, though maybe we could do. But for pipes where you're going to have different sorts of cornering to go around, this is really important. And I'll show you a use of this later. We can also press R to just reset that corner to what the base level is. And we can change either one that we want to. The other thing we can configure, I'm just going to hit C one more time, is that we can change our connectors. Now, connectors are basically the end caps, what's going to happen on the end here. And if I scroll up, you can see we can get some really cool, already inbuilt ends that we can use for our pipe. And you can decide which one's relevant. Now, if it's something like this, you can also have to control and then rotate it around. But I'm probably going to stick with, let's go with that. This seems good for a handle. The other thing you can do, should you want to, is that you can also change these so they're different on each end. I'll mention that again in a second when we talk through some use cases. So click, we've got this confirmed. Let's click there, Alt and X, put that to the other side, and we've got our two handles. So quick and easy to do. And we could have done this all in one go to begin with. I just wanted to talk through all those different options. So let's have a look at a couple of use cases. So the first is, let's just Shift and D, and let's get rid of that mirror modifier. I might want to make something like an aerial. So let's come here. I'm going to Alt and R to get rid of the rotation. Let's G to somewhere there. And all I'm going to do is go into vertex mode. And I'm going to delete out that vertex. And you'll notice that the end point changes there. And we'll do the same there. So delete out that vertex. And suddenly we've got this, which we can, that's just G and put that somewhere there-ish. We could use this as an aerial. Now, let's just demo something we can do here. So let's come into our pipe generator again. And if I start to change my radius, you'll notice that the endpoints, those connectors, change as well, which is great. The other thing that we can do is that we can, let's just go there, press C, and you'll notice it realize there's no corners here, so we don't have any options here. And one more time is we can unsync our different connectors. And then I can, let's say, change the start connector so we'll go into something that looks better for an aerial. I think maybe that. And then I can hold down Alt and change the end connector. And I could even go to None. So we've got something, if we just extend this up, that would be quite 3D printable as an aerial. And it's got that thickness to it, so it's not just going to snap. Now, if you want to, we can apply this. So let's click Apply. And then come to our end there. And then let's do something like Bevel that so it looks a little bit better as an aerial. There we go. So maybe that's starting to look like something else. Let's move away from that. Right, I'm also going to grab this again, and let's just Shift and D and bring this over here. And once again, I'm going to go into vertex mode. I'm just going to start moving around these. So we'll have that connected there, and then we'll have something here. So I'm just going to make like a dangly sort of cable. So we'll go with something like that, okay? So we've got a cable as if it was going into the ground. Let's get rid of that mirror again. And then we want to change this so it looks a bit more like a cable. Oh, in fact, that's awful. It's not even actually connected to our computer. There we go. So this is our connector to our cable. Let's just shift a mesh and bring in a plane. Let's S to scale that up so that we've got a ground floor. And once again, we'll just add in a new material and then just change that color to be a lot darker so it doesn't get in the way of our pipe demonstration. So let's just G and set those up. So we've got that coming in here. And this is the sort of instance where we're going to want to change the radius of each of our corners. So let's select this, go into our pipe generator, C to come into our configuration mode for the corners. And then we can just come here Let's control that one so it's more rounded. Scroll down, control that one so it's more rounded. And then scroll down and control that one so we've got this one more rounded. Now, this is not what this is primarily designed for. But it does make a really nice little sort of dangly cable really quickly. Obviously, it's not as good as something like, let's say, Cable Rater, which will do an even better job and do much more and have loads of functionality to it. But ND is free, so this is definitely a good use case if you want to be able to do this quite quickly. Now, there is a slight problem here. If we have a look at this connector, 
you can see that this is not quite working. You can see the end because this isn't straight enough. So relatively simple solution. You can just move this around to the point where it is relatively straight and it works. Or you could get this to the point where it is perfectly straight. So let's just G there and then G and then Z that up so that now we've got that perfectly working. And this is why it being non-destructive is so useful to us. It's really, really nice. Now we could also do this another way. I'm just gonna bring my cursor to there and let's bring in a Bezier curve. So this is actually designed for use with mesh, not with Bezier curves. Let's just G and apply the scale. But we can really easily just move this around. Let's rotate that somewhere there. I think that's a little bit high. Let's go with that. And Let's come in here and then let's E and let's S that. And we can scale that one down as well. So we can easily do something with our curves to make this work. And then all we need to do is go into object mode and then we can make this work really easily. But I'm just gonna duplicate this quickly. So let's just bring this over to the sides just so I can demonstrate some things. So all we need to do is right click, convert to, and then mesh. Shift F2, come into our pipe generator, make this wider and we're good. Now, this does not look as nice as this pipe over here. It's not as smooth. You can see all this segmentation, and that's actually to do with the curve itself. So if we come to our object data properties of our curve here, we've got our resolution. If we up this to, let's say, 32, and then right-click, convert to, and mesh, and then do exactly the same thing, this is going to look much smoother, much nicer, and we're good to go. Now, we are gonna have the same problem if we put in a connector here. So let's just see and see and put in some connectors. Let's do those. And these look a little bit off. This is relatively easy to fix. All you need to do is just start removing some of these. So let's just X, delete those vertices, GG, and then C to clamp it, and then drag that down so that we know that this is straight. So there are lots of ways of getting around these little problems that we might have. So there's some pointers and some potential solutions. Now I'm gonna come back to our aerial um, and just have a look at this because there is one other issue that I want to mention and this is only really relevant if you're using this for 3D printing. So at the moment we've got this applied and you can see that we've got some slight issues here. Now that is because that this connector the object that's here or the part that's here does not respond to the amount of segments that our pipe gets. So we could just have less segments on our pipe, that is an option, but this isn't always gonna work out great. And because this has not got joined geometry to our pipe, it is separated, we're gonna have an issue here when it comes to 3D printing. You can also see, if we go into face mode, there's some weird overlaps here and here, and that's because, if I just S to scale this down, the connectors are hollow in essence. Now, this is gonna cause us some issues. You can also see here that you've got this overlap between the connector and the bit of the pipe. Now, there are some solutions to this, but they're a little bit more in depth, but they do give some really cool options, including setting up your own custom connectors, which will always be available to you wherever you use ND. So you can just make a connector that you know you like, and it will always be there. Now, that's gonna be a little bit more in depth, and this tutorial's already gone through the basics of what this can do and shown some nice use cases. So what I'll do is I'll set that up as a new video, bearing in mind it's not gonna be as beginner friendly because it's gonna be a little bit more technical. If you are interested in that, it's gonna be the next video out, I think. So subscribe if you're not subscribed and hit that bell icon so you know when the video's out. Alternatively, if you fancy supporting the channel and you want to get these videos a week ahead of time, which means that video's already out, there is a Patreon channel where, as I said, you get these videos a week early and ad-free and other great perks as well for just a few dollars a month. And any support there is really appreciated. Have a great day, guys.